Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my Friday message. My special guests this week are medical students Emily Alway and Braley Grisell. Emily and Braley will join me in welcoming the incoming class, and they'll share some of their perspectives on the medical school experience. But before we talk to them, I'd like to share a few updates. Last Friday, August 4th, our incoming first-year medical students donned their white coats for the first time in the annual ceremony that marks the beginning of their responsibilities as healthcare professionals. The white coat ceremony symbolizes each student's first step as a professional, and it's a day they will always remember. Please join me in welcoming the class of 2027. On July 27th, the School of Medicine hosted its inaugural Equity Advancement Symposium. The day-long symposium was sponsored by the School of Medicine's Ideal Office and the Office of Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. It brought together more than 100 faculty, students, and staff from across Duke for conversations on the intersection of science and equity, diversity, and inclusion. Keynote speaker David Asai, the Senior Director for Science Education at the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, called on Duke and other academic medical institutions to redouble their effort to implement and sustain meaningful changes to increase diversity in sciences, engineering, technology, and math. The event also included poster presentations and thesis presentations from some of our PhD students. In recent research news, a Duke study might lead to a new approach to reducing the incidence of cerebral palsy in infants. Research in animal models, led by Eric Menner in the Department of Pediatrics, has identified a lipid molecule in breast milk that stimulates the growth of nerve fibers in the brain known as white matter. The loss of white matter in preterm infants is known to cause neurologic damage. The next step is to develop therapy that safely delivers the lipid to at-risk infants. And finally, congratulations to Mike Boyce on his election as a fellow in the American Society for Cell Biology. He studies mammalian signaling through protein glycosylation. He is one of 19 new fellows elected by his peers to the ASCS this year, and his election is a well-deserved honor. Now please join me with my conversation with Emily and Braley. In conjunction with last week's white coat ceremony where we welcomed new students, we thought it'd be a good time to get the perspectives of students that have been here for, for a while. So today I am very happy to have Emily Alway and Braley Grissel. They're medical students currently. I believe, Emily, you are in the MD-PhD program, fifth year, mm -hmm. and Braley, you are a fourth year medical student. Yep. So congratulations, you made it this far. Thank you. I'd love to know how you ended up at Duke. I understand you're from Detroit, Emily, but you have roots in North Carolina? I do, yes. So I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, but my dad and everybody before him is um, from Pembroke, North Carolina, which is southern central North Carolina, and we're all members of the Lumbee tribe of North Carolina. So as I was thinking about where I wanted to go to medical school and where my passions lie within sort of what I wanted to do for a career, I decided that I wanted outreach to the Lumbee community to be a part of it. So I came to Duke because that was a good geographic location. But then when I got here, I saw all of my classmates at Second Look, all of the faculty at Second Look. Everybody was so supportive, so excited to be here, and really excited to help students follow what they're passionate about. Um, so I thought Duke would be a good place um, for me because I would have the support to do that outreach that I wanted to do and also be geographically close. I hope you still feel that way. I do definitely still feel that way. Um, I've worked with a current fourth year medical student, Marilyn Yamamoto, over this last year. Um, and we founded the first group for Native and Indigenous students here at Duke Med called the Native and Indigenous Medical Student Association. So we're working on getting some uh, uh, outreach projects up and running and creating a community for Native and Indigenous students here at Duke Med. That's terrific. Now, Braley, you're from further west, I believe. Yes. So how did you make it here? Um, well, when I applied, I was living in Texas, actually. Um, so I applied on the Texas application system as well as the a AMCAS. Um, and Duke was one of the out-of-state schools that I got an interview at. And on the interview day, I just really fell in love with uh, the students that I met, the faculty that I met. Um, I saw a lot of evidence for uh, the fact that Duke has a lot of student support systems um, and also the third year research option was, was huge for me as well, um, and the financial aid support here. I think those were the major things that stood out to me on interview day. 
Um, I actually got off the wait list to come here, so I was actually planning to go somewhere else and then uh, had to kind of scramble to get into Duke, but I was so, so glad that I did. When did you have to do that? When um, I think it was April, like late okay. April when I got off the wait list. Um, so yeah, it was my top choice from the, the interview day. Um, and so I was very, very happy when I was able to come here. That's terrific. That's terrific. And I hope you have feel like you made the right choice. Yes, I absolutely made the right choice. <laughs> Good. So you're in the MD-PhD program. Yes. It's a long haul. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose that and, and what are you working on? Yeah, so I've wanted to be a doctor for as long as I can remember. And when I got into college and started doing some shadowing and seeing how much room there was left for us to figure out scientifically what new treatments we can come up with for patients, I realized I was never going to be someone who was satisfied not being able to say, you know, I don't know the answer exactly to what's going on with you, but I'm working on it at the bench side, and I wanted to be able to say that to my patients. Um, so I came in very interested in psychiatry and had a little bit of a shift during my second year, so I was very grateful for that early clinical exposure here at Duke. Um, I became more interested in general surgery, and I have a neuroscience background from my undergrad degree, so I became interested in the gut-brain connection and how it is that the foods that we ingest are sensed by our intestines and how that changes our choices of what foods we're eating. And I'm really interested in that in the context of obesity and bariatric surgery. So very excited to get to put those two worlds together in the future in my career. Terrific. And Braley, I understand you told me you're interested in emergency medicine. How did you come to that? Yeah, um, it's kind of a, a long story. I actually was an emergency medicine scribe in undergrad, oh, um, wow. and I loved that job. I loved being in the ED. But when I came into medical school, I also wanted to do psychiatry. Um, and then as I got into my clinical year, I realized that I loved procedures. I absolutely loved my trauma surgery rotation. I still loved my psychiatry rotation. And so then melding those two things was a little bit of a complicated question. Um, and then I remembered my experiences in emergency medicine and realized that that was the perfect place to um, combine my interest in procedures, my interest in humanism and the social aspects of medicine. Um, into one location. Um, I also am really, really passionate about helping uh, patients who have been incarcerated or um, having substance abuse issues, um, as well as medical ethics. And so I think that in emergency medicine, I'll have a really good opportunity to combine all of those interests and still get to do the things clinically that I loved on my rotations. I, I think you will have that opportunity on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah. So now looking back, as I mentioned, there's a whole class of new students. What advice would you give new students, Braley? Ooh, that's a good one. I think when I came into medical school, I kind of saw it as a huge black box. I didn't really know what it was gonna be like to actually live through medical school. I thought, I'm just gonna be busy. I'm not gonna have a real life. I'm gonna go in and then come out a resident someday. Um, and so when I talk to incoming students, I really encourage them to still see um, their personal life and their self-care as a huge part of their medical education. And the fact that life doesn't just stop when you enter medical school. For me, my life actually became more enriched. I made a lot of friends here. I've had so many fantastic experiences through med school. And so I encourage people to really like savor those experiences because that's still your life, you're still having a, a variety of life experiences even while you're studying and going through this difficult training. Well, I think your generation really focuses appropriately on how you balance, you know, your passion and your profession and your interests outside of your profession. I think you do that extraordinarily well. So what advice would you give? I think the advice that I would give to students that are coming into Duke would be to really follow your passions. I think it can be really overwhelming and intimidating when you're setting out on this new med school journey and it, it is this black box and you don't really know what's going to happen and keeping that humanity is really important. I think part of that is keeping what you're passionate about and there are so many ways to build those passions in, in a way that they kind of synergize with your medical training as well. And one thing that's really stood out to me about Duke is there's always a group of students, there's always a faculty member, there's always someone in, in administration who's willing to help you follow those passions. So whether that's performing an SFS or starting a new affinity group for 
you know, a group that you're a part of. Um, bringing what you're passionate about to the community is always a great way to add and make Duke Med feel like home. I love those messages. We are so fortunate to have you here and I wish you the best of luck in your, your next step. And to everybody else, thank you for everything that you do and have a great weekend.